So today I will be talking about the movie Love and Mercy, um, which is about the life of Brian Wilson at two different time periods in his life, um, during the 1960s and during the 1980s. Um, so this movie I decided was a biography um, because to me a biography is something that not every single little detail has to be correct so long as the overall essence is correct and the person is portrayed as how they really were and they act as how they would really act in real life. So I came to this conclusion first off by doing a, a little bit of research. Um, so most of the story is real. Brian Wilson himself said that the movie is very factual. Um, and another thing that I found very interesting is that John Cusack and Paul Dano, who um, play Brian Wilson at two different time periods in his life, um, made it their goal to portray him as two different people because when Brian Wilson uh, himself talked about his younger self, he was very disconnected from that person and talked about that person as if um, it were another person. Uh, person completely and I think that this kind of contrast between the two characters you know there's 1960s Brian and 1980s Brian I think that this contrast is kind of highlighted um, and emphasized with the use of music in the film so uh, first of all I think that in um, the 1960s uh, Brian Wilson's essence is portrayed uh, through the recording of pet sounds so not only does the recording of Pet Sounds show how much he accomplished um, in the music industry, and you know it was a very uh, kind of revolutionary album, um, but it also shows you know little details about his personality. Uh, so for example, um, it, this is around minute twenty-seven. Uh, one of the studio musicians asks Brian if he has made a mistake because. She says that it doesn't make sense that he has two different bass lines and two different keys. And he just kind of says, oh, well, it makes sense in my head. And it kind of shows, uh, you know, his personality. And uh, it also shows his work ethic because he, he is kind of shown in the studio for like hours and hours on end without stopping, it seems like, you know. Um, so it kind of shows like, you know, these little... Uh, details about his personality and I also think that music shows his uh, deteriorating mental state in the 1960s. This was uh, immediately after he stopped touring with the Beach Boys and started to experience some mental problems. So there's a scene around minute 59 where he puts on headphones um, as he's about to record and he starts hearing these voices that are kind of like mixed in with the music that he uh, has recorded. And you also see a lot of that in the 1980s um, as he's kind of having these like flashbacks. Um, so the 1980s Brian, um, that music kind of shows, music isn't as significant in, in the that plot line, but it kind of shows what small part of himself he still had left. Um, because, as I said before, it, the point is to contrast the two characters as if they were two completely different people. Um, so there's a scene at, uh, uh, it's at 3830, and Brian is playing the piano for his future wife, Melinda Ledbetter, and he says that he came up with the melody when he saw her. And um, that kind of shows that he still has those music abilities, but you also see music playing a completely different role than was shown before um, as to kind of highlight um, his problems that he had with his uh, caretaker doctor, Eugene. Um, there's a scene at, uh, it's at hour one minute 20, um, and Melinda walks in and Eugene is uh, yelling at Brian who's sitting at the piano um, telling him that like he has to come up with music and uh, Brian is just sitting there obviously looking very like disconnected from reality and I think that that kind of shows um, the problems that he had in the 1980s and another thing that's interesting about this particular scene is it's um, 
it's shown right after an incident that Brian had in the 1960s where everyone is sitting at the dinner table and he kind of like uh, has a an episode he kind of freaks out over um, the sounds of like the like clinking of the spoons and the plates I guess um, and that kind of you know shows like his mental state then and then uh, this scene in the 1980s really highlights his mental state uh, at that point which are actually very similar um, and it, it kind of shows the parallel um, between the two plot lines um, so they are kind of portrayed to as to be very different people and yet the plot lines actually parallel one another which I think is very interesting um, so those are kind of the reasons why I decided that this film was a biography kind of the essence of Brian Wilson is like I would say correct it's how, you know that's how uh, he would act in real life so thank you